Today in the news, NVIDIA improves an RTX feature, and we talk VRAM. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. So, the RTX 3070, 3080, and 3090 have been announced. And not only that, but we also got other features coming. There's the Reflex Analyzer, the RTX Broadcast app, Omniverse, Machinima, and more. But the one thing that I want to focus on is DLSS, or more specifically, the SDK for DLSS. DLSS just got another major upgrade that will essentially destroy AMD's counterpart. So far, DLSS only did resolution upscaling using deep learning and a modified version of temporal anti-aliasing. The first version of DLSS felt more like a beta. It had pretty bad quality uh, with a lot of fuzz. The DLSS 2.0 version gave up the cloud training for specific games and instead does everything directly on the GPU. The new version of DLSS though, DLSS 2.1, brings in killer features. First, it supports VR. Now, I know most of you don't really care about that, but for those who do, like me, it's great. The second thing they added is an ultra performance mode. This mode gives it a new 9x scaling option for 8K gaming. Nvidia specifically talks about the 3090 in that case, but there's no reason why other RTX cards couldn't use it. And lastly, and this one is the big one, DLSS 2.1 will feature dynamic resolution scaling. Unlike AMD's Radeon Boost, which just scales the resolution of your screen depending on uh, mouse movements, which can sometimes make things look a little bit funky, DLSS 2.1 will adjust the internal resolution on the fly and run its algorithm to your target resolution. Now, DLSS is obviously not available for every game, neither is Radeon Boost, but DLSS is definitely the best implementation of the two, specifically talking about resolution scaling. Also, in NVIDIA, if you wanted to see how the RTX 2080 Ti compares to the RTX 3080 in Doom Eternal at 4K, NVIDIA just released a gameplay demo. The 3080 is about 40% faster in all of the places that I could compare. Uh, it also averages well over 100 FPS, except for this tiny encounter where it dropped to 82. Looking at what happened on screen though, it's understandable. It's just a shame there were uh, no comparison at that specific moment. And lastly, for NVIDIA, a lot of people have been asking the company why the RTX 3080 and 3070 will come equipped with only 10 and 8 gigabytes of VRAM respectively. Well, they kind of answered the question on their latest Q&A. They say that the 3080 is actually designed for gaming at up to 4K resolution with all of the settings maxed out. They then give us examples of a list of games at 4K maxed out and with RTX on, and they say that it will get about 60 to 100 FPS and use about 4 to 6 gigabytes of VRAM. That list that NVIDIA is talking about includes Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Metro Exodus, Wolfenstein Youngblood, Gears of War 5, Borderlands 3, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Now that's great for those games, but what about other titles? You have examples like Doom Eternal, which on the uh, Nightmare settings at 1440p will use about 7.5 gigs of VRAM jump to 4K and you crossed the 8 gigabyte limit. That's bad news for the RTX 3070. I mean, Nvidia says that the 3070 is the same or better than the RTX 2080 Ti, but that one has more VRAM, which means it will handle VRAM hungry games better than the 3070. Maybe that's why Nvidia decided to stick to the RTX 3080 for the Doom Eternal demo. On top of that, other features like DLSS and ray tracing use more VRAM, DLSS especially, so any future games that support these features might be too much for a 3070. Now, not everyone games at 4K, and the RTX 3070 might not have been advertised for that purpose. But let's be real, the push to higher resolution monitors is not going to end anytime soon. Moving on, in an ongoing effort to defeat the evil that is Asetex patent, companies are continuing to think outside the loop. That was a pretty good pun there. NZXT has the M22 with the pump in the middle of the radiator, others on the side of the radiator, and the latest comes from Be Quiet. It's called the Pure Loop, and they're using what they call a double decoupled pump. What's more is that it has an easy fill port access. Why? Well, it comes with a small bottle of fluid to top off the AI after a couple of years. Question is, are you really going to remember where that bottle is in five years when you need to top off that loop? I wouldn't. 
And that is pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories, especially the VRAM part. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. It's my light. I was looking at my light. It's right here. Oh.